Hello and good evening. Thanks for joining us. You're watching News at 10 with me, Mohamed Amin Carlos. Well, the government has just signed an agreement with pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca for the procurement of additional 10%, which is 6.4 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine after previously having signed preliminary agreements with COVAX and Pfizer to secure a vaccine supply of 30% of the population. Well, Prime Minister Tanzari Boyerin Yassin in announcing this said this meant that the government had secured 40% guarantee of vaccine supply through joint agreements with the three companies. Kerajaan baru saja menandatangani perjanjian dengan syarikat farmasutikal AstraZeneca bagi perolehan sebanyak 6.4 juta dos atau tambahan sebanyak 10% lagi. Melalui kesemua rundingan dan perjanjian yang telah dan akan dimeterai buat masa ini, Kerajaan akan membelanjakan sejumlah 504.4 juta dolar, iaitu 2.05 bilion ringgit. The Premier added that the government is also in final negotiations with Sinovac, Cancino and Gamalea to secure a vaccine supply increase of more than 80% or 26.5 million of the country's total population. Tantri Moyedin said this in a short video on the latest development regarding the distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine to Malaysians. On another note, Tantri Mohyedin will be among the first individuals to receive the COVID-19 vaccine in a bid to convince the people that the vaccine is safe and effective. The Prime Minister said it would be followed by the frontliners before being given to target groups, namely high-risk groups such as the elderly, those with non-communicable diseases and chronic respiratory diseases. Ini akan diikuti dengan petugas barisan hadapan sebelum ataupun frontliners sebelum diberikan kepada kumpulan sasa iaitu kumpulan berisiko tinggi seperti warga emas mereka yang mengidap penyakit tidak berjangkit NCD dan penyakit saluran pernafasan kronik jawatan kuasa khas jaminan akses bekalan vaksin yang telah ditubuhkan dan dipengusikan bersama oleh yang berhormat menteri kesihatan dan Menteri Sains, Teknologi dan Inovasi akan memastikan bekalan vaksin dapat diperolehi pada kadar segera. The government expects the first supply of 1 million doses of vaccine from Pfizer to be received and will be given to the target group hopefully by February 2021. Pada pendapat saya, saya rasa kerajaan ini membuat satu langkah yang tepat. Sebab sekarang ini apa yang kita perlukan adalah satu nokta kepada penularan pandemik ini. So dengan uh, PM sendiri tawarkan diri untuk jadi orang pertama mendapat vaksin ini, pada saya sepatutnya memberi satu keyakinan kepada rakyat Malaysia bahawa uh, vaksin ini boleh jadi nokta kepada semua uh, norma baru yang kita buat selama ini dan kita dapat hidup seperti biasa kembali untuk tahun-tahun selepas ini. Uh, sekarang ni Perdana Menteri yang ambil yang pertama vaksin itu. Okey, yang tu uh, ramai rakyat boleh percaya Perdana Menteri kita untuk mengambil vaksin yang banyak dan uh, yang tu uh, satu apa interaksi untuk banyak uh, rakyat Malaysia boleh uh, ambil vaksin tu untuk memutuskan COVID-19. Untuk Inisiatif ataupun usaha yang di, 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 di sangat oleh Perdana Menteri, uh, kita ucapkan all the best. Mokanya ada satu keputusan yang terbaik dan ini menjadi pemangkin untuk uh, rakyat Malaysia lah, untuk yang mana yang nak menerima vaksin ini dengan sebaiknya. Apapun uh, kita harapkan vaksin yang diterima ini diuji sepenuhnya dan dipastikan benar-benar selamat untuk rakyat Malaysia lah sebab lain orang lain pula sistem badannya so diharapkan sebelum diberikan uji kaji kepada ataupun diberi kepada rakyat Malaysia yang memerlukan uh, diuji dan dipastikan ianya benar-benar selamat dan boleh digunakan untuk kebaikan semua rakyat Malaysia lah especially bagi saya baguslah sebab lebih ramai orang dapat vaksin tu kan berbanding sebelum ni semua 10% bila dah tambah jadi 80% 80% tu maksudnya lagi ramailah rakyat Malaysia yang dapat uh, keput, apa, 
kesan baik daripada vaksin tu kan? Kalau PM kasih try, kita pun try lah. Betul tak? Mesti mau cuba lah dulu. Kalau kita tak cuba, nanti orang lain pun sama juga. Kan? Satu dunia pun takut mati ke? Kan? Bila kita try dulu, okey, ni ubat boleh pakai. Bagus lah. And now for the COVID-19 updates. Well, the number of new COVID-19 cases is in the four digits again for the second day in a row. As the health ministry reports, 2,062 cases today. The cumulative number of COVID-19 cases in Malaysia is now at 97,389 with 17,646 being active cases. Well, Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Nora Hisham Abdullah said of the new cases reported today, only four were imported cases. And Selangor continues to lead with 1,014 cases followed by Kuala Lumpur and Sabah. There are 111 individuals in the ICU with 51 of them breathing through the ventilator. Well, apart from that, 911 patients recovered today, bringing the total number of recoveries to 79,304. The MOH also reported one new death in the past 24 hours, and the death toll in the country rises to 439. The health ministry has not received any reports of a new variant of the COVID-19 virus in Malaysia, which was detected in the United Kingdom and is said to be more infectious. Its minister, Dato Sri Dr. Adam Baba, said if there were reports of such cases, genome sequencing would be carried out to identify the presence of the variant and curb its spread. Dulu kita ada varian yang pernah diketahui iaitu Siva Gaga, eh? iaitu uh, D614G, eh? uh, varian yang yang cepat uh, merebak. Eh? So far, countries such as Spain, India, Hong Kong and other European countries had closed their border to United Kingdom due to new variant of the virus reported. Well, international students, except those from the United Kingdom, will be allowed entry into Malaysia starting 1st January next year. And Senior Minister Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said the National Security Council, the MKN, has agreed with a proposal from the Higher Education Ministry for international students to be physically present at campuses for the 2021 session. The senior minister said the permission will be given to new and returning students of public and private universities and have permanent accommodations in Malaysia. He added that incoming students to Malaysia must adhere to the standard operating procedures or SOPs already set by the MKN. Tertaluk kepada SOP biasa kepada warga yang datang daripada luar negara iaitu 3 hari sebelum datang mereka perlu mengadakan swab test Apabila tiba di pintu masuk di KLIA, sekali lagi mereka perlu mengadakan tes dan selepas itu mereka akan dihantar, kalau mereka negatif, mereka akan dihantar ke pusat korentin yang dikhaskan oleh kementerian selama 10 hari. Datu Sri Ismail Sabri said the costs for the screening will be borne by the students. The senior minister added that international students can be accompanied by a guardian who must follow the same SOPs. The government has no intention to shorten prison term of the prisoners with minor offences during the COVID-19 pandemic. However, Deputy Home Minister 1, Dato Sri Dr. Ismail Mohammed, said the right of prisoners who are eligible for parole, release on licence or through state pardon will not be hampered. Selara dengan hala tuju Jabatan Penjara Malaysia iaitu 2 per 3 banduan sabitan yang layak akan menjalani pemulihan di luar penjara langkah-langkah mengurangkan kesesakan melalui pelaksanaan dan pengembangan sistem parol perintah kadiran wajib program beriti integrasi penghuni industri program corporate smart internship dan pembebasan banduan secara lesen dilaksanakan secara berterusan 
Meanwhile, Data 3 Dr. Ismail said the President's Department has two sets of standard operating procedures or SOPs to curb the spread of COVID-19 in prisons. The SOPs are pertaining to the acceptance or admission of new inmates and on their escort. Apart from that, the Deputy Minister said the President's Department also has its own standing order with regards to COVID-19 screening tests, which require prisoners to have the result of their COVID-19 screening test before they can be accepted at the respective prisons. Well, Prime Minister Tantri Muyedin Yassin today visited flood evacuees at temporary relief centers or PPSs in Kelantan and Tringanu. Now, Tantri Muyedin began his visits at Sekolaka Bangsan SK Gualtingi Relief Center in Pasir Mas, Kelantan, accompanied by Menteri Besar Dato Ahmad Yaakob. Well, Tantri Muyedin was given a 20 minute briefing on the flood situation in Kelantan by Pasir Mas District Officer Nick Mohammed Noor Nick Eshak. Well, he then spent some time visiting and mingling with the flood evacuees comprising 154 people from 59 families and presented aid in the form of food supply to them. In Trungano, Tansri Muyedin visited Temporary Relief Center, or PPS, in SK Bukit Minto, Kamaman, and was given a briefing on the current flood situation in the state. Tansri Muyedin, accompanied by Munji Basad, Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Samsuri Mokhtar, later spent about one hour visiting the flood evacuees at the PPS and presented kits consisting of basic necessities to them. Well, the visit was his first after being appointed as the Prime Minister on 29th February. Well, the Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency, MMEA, in Johor has foiled an attempt to smuggle about 100 kilograms of drugs believed to be shabu worth 5.1 million ringgit near the Tanjung Pelopas port, Gelangpata, last night. Well, the smugglers attempted to fool authorities by hiding the illegal substances in packets of Chinese tea. Deputy Director General of Malaysian Maritime Operations, Rear Admiral Kamaru Zaman Abu Hassan, said a boat was detected exiting Sungai Boh Estuary and into Tanjong Piai waters believed to be headed to the Malaysian-Indonesian border. Immediately after noticing the presence of authorities, the boat driver turned off all lights and sped off to a nearby mangrove swamp. The boat was then abandoned 0.5 nautical miles southwest of Pelabuhan Tanjong Pelepas. Anggota bot ronda merapat ke bot fiber yang ditinggalkan itu dan menemukan muatan empat beg pakaian, ya, empat beg pakaian dan satu kotak. Dan pemeriksaan lanjut ke atas beg dan kotak itu mendapati terdapat 98 paket bungkusan teh Cina yang mengandungi serbuk kristal dipercayai dadah jenis syabu. The case is being investigated under Section 39B of the Dangerous Drugs Act 1952. Well, the Communications and Multimedia Ministry, KKMM, in collaboration with RTM, is committed to increase the usage of alternative and augmentative communication technology for the benefit of persons with disabilities. That's the OKU. Well, the service has already been used in RTM, but involves a significantly high operating cost. And if it Communications and Multimedia Minister Dato Saifuddin Abdullah explained that the system is a service to support OKU communications which may suffer from more than one disability. KKMM sentiasa menasihati dan menggalakkan semua stesen penyiaran <coughs> untuk menyediakan perkhidmatan jurubahasa isyarat, penerangan audio, komunikasi alternatif dan augmentif bagi rancangan di bawah kelolaan mereka untuk meningkatkan komitmen dan pelaksanaan komunikasi antara kerajaan yang prihatin di bawah pimpinan Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin kami di Kementerian Komunikasi dan Multimedia mulai bulan Januari ini tuan yang dipertua akan memulakan unit komunikasi OKU 
RTM has continuously implemented OKU beneficial initiatives on four of its TV channels, especially in its new programs. Meanwhile, Burnama will begin the usage of sign language interpreters on its TV channels early next year. Well, the ceiling price for certified paddy seeds has been officially set to 35 ringgit for every 20 kilograms to prevent price manipulation. Well, according to Agriculture and Food Industries Minister Gato Sri Dr. Ronald Kiandi, the setting of a ceiling price for certified seeds will start during the first plantation season nationwide early next year. The minister said this move would benefit about 320,000 farmers in the peninsula. Setiap musim penanaman padi ini, pasawa isu mengenai kelewatan pengantaran benih padi dan juga harga pekampit benih padi yang dibeli oleh pasawa tidak dikawal sepenuhnya oleh kementerian. To overcome this issue, the ministry took a preemptive measure to preserve the interests of farmers. Speaking after the launch of a paddy seed distribution event, Dr. Sri Dr. Ronald said this initiative will benefit about 320,000 farmers throughout Peninsular Malaysia. Well, Malaysia's participation in the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, is expected to help expedite the country's economic recovery from the impact of COVID-19. The International Trade and Industries Minister, Jato Sri Babadaz Binali, said this is based on a report by the Peterson Institute for International Economics Research issued in June. Well, furthermore, MIDF Research predicts Malaysia will obtain an increase in GDP by 16 billion ringgit a year through the partnership. Meanwhile, the Malaysia External Trade Development Corporation, Martrade, expects local exports to RCEP markets to increase by 21 billion ringgit a year. This is because RCEP, participated by 15 countries, comprised of a third of the global population, can help local industry players market their products and services to a wider audience by enjoying progressively reduced or eliminated tariffs. Selain daripada tarif, pengurangan halangan bukan tarif atau non-tarif measures yang merupakan salah satu cabaran utama dalam menempusi pasaran antarabangsa juga merupakan manfaat utama penyertaan Malaysia dalam RCEP. Ini boleh dicapai menerusi penyelarasan tata cara import dan ekspor, pengiktirafan secara timbal balas dan penerimaan standard industri dan teknikal negara masing-masing serta perkongsian maklumat. Datus Riyaz Minali further explained that the RCEP agreement is expected to accelerate the process of regional economic recovery and post-COVID-19 Malaysia through market opening, increased investment, trade facilitation and industrial integration, especially among small and medium enterprises into the regional value chain. And with that, we conclude this evening's News at 10. In our top story, Malaysia secures additional 6.4 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine. Well, folks, please do join us again for more updates at 12.30 p.m. tomorrow. I'm Mohamed Amin Carlos, and stay tuned to Saloran Brita RTM. Good night.